Here's a book I read recently, Gelassenheit beginnt im Kopf. Very interesting about how to be relaxed. Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Today I want to talk about how I learned German. Uh, remember, if you uh, enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell, on the bell for notification. If you follow me on a podcast service, please leave a review. I do appreciate it. So my major effort into learning German took place in 1987. Uh, and I'm going to go through that with you. But I did have prior exposure to German. Uh, my parents were from Czechoslovakia. They spoke German at home, although they spoke English with my brother and with me. So I had heard German, but I couldn't speak it. Then I worked on a German ship for two weeks, hitchhiking over to Europe. Uh, I hitchhiked around in Germany. I even worked for two weeks on a construction site in Vienna. So I had some use of German, but it was very rudimentary. So in 1987, I was between jobs. I had a month off between jobs. And I said, you know, I really want to learn German. And I had, you know, prior to getting on that German boat, I looked at a grammar book, der, dem, die, des, whatever. And it's always, it struck me that it was just impossible to remember those things. 1987, long before I had heard of Stephen Krashen or Input or uh, link, um, I said, I need to read. I need to read to get a sense of this language. I need to get the language in me. So let me show you what I did. First of all, I went to the secondhand bookstores here in Vancouver. I don't know what got into me, but I said, let's see what, what is there. So I found this book, Im Wandel der Jahre, which is pretty old. It's a University of Southern California, 1959 it was published. And if you look at the book, it's, it's got sort of text and uh, it's got uh, vocabulary, you know, along the margin, which is really good. You don't have to flip back for it. Now, of course, it's not going to get all the words that you don't know, but quite a few of them. And as often happens, some of the words they explain for you, you already know. And you'll see that it's a secondhand book because this is not my writing in here. It's full of at least one other person, perhaps more. Look at this, you know, scribbling all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, in the text. But uh, it, like, look at this one. I mean, this some person undertook to translate the whole thing, which I couldn't read this little chicken scratch. But at any rate, so I read through this book. So, but that's not the only book I found. I found this other book called Auslese. And here it's a little more organized and they have a word list behind every chapter. And I found, you know, wir lesen Deutsch, wir lesen Deutsch. So it's again the same idea. Always text with word lists, if you can see that. All right. Not tremendously interesting, perhaps, but I was motivated. Oh, here's another one that I did. Uh, Deutsche Kulturgeschichte. So here again, and I love history. And so I love this book, but this didn't have the, um, you know, the glossary. So it was more difficult to read. And I just let whatever words I didn't know fly by me. Uh, here's another one that I got. Das erste Jahr. And here again, uh, you know, lots of um, vocabulary and text and of course I avoid any any sort of exercises or things of that nature but at any rate these are the things that I plowed through in that month and I got a lot of them you know yet listen via and I mean these books are probably largely out of print Deutsche für Sprachlehrer Ausländer Deutsche Sprachlehrer für Ausländer so more of the same more of the same. And I don't know if you can see here, but just an endless, you know. Der Weg zum Lesen. Quer durch Deutschland. More of the same. Now, this one I think is my highlighting. Uh, Maschinen, Menschen und Maschinen. Der treffende Ausdruck. Texte, Themen, Übungen. Whatever. Uh, aktuelle Themen. Okay, lots. Now, at some point, I changed, like, okay, and there's literature, and there's a, 
Atlas Sur Ecologie, Geschichte Tirols, when I was in Tirol, I got interested. Uh, what do we got here? Alte Legenden und Neue Literatur, again with, with exercises and whatnot. I mean, no end. Just listen and learn. Now, I don't know whether this matched, but at some point I found a cassette tape series, which was a series of interviews uh, from a German radio, interviews with normal people. That was the best. I listened to it over and over again. If I get a hold of audio material where I find it interesting and I find it pleasing to listen to, it's almost like music. And even if I don't fully understand it, I just listen and listen and listen. So, but I got lots of books. So, Discussion Gesellschaft, Der Kaufmann, Advanced German Course. I don't know what I did with that. I mean, it just goes on and on. And of course, Die Leiden des Jungen Wertes. I mean, you got to read the, because for something like this, I also get the audiobook. So, I, I won't go through all of these books. I even got books on, uh, what else we got here? You know, books on Das Gehirn, which is a subject of interest to me. And of course, I was in the lumber business and in building was, you know, very important to me. Handbuch Gesundes Bauen und Wohnen. So I read that in German. Uh, what else did we do here? Here's a book I read recently, Gelassenheit beginnt im Kopf. Very interesting about how to be relaxed, sort of a combination of Zen and, uh, and Stoic <laughs> philosophy, how to relax in your life. Uh, you know, literature. I also got some... Ah, here we are, yeah. I got some, uh, some self-help books, you know, how to become more efficient. Uh, this uh, Leitner who sort of designed a prototype of the uh, space repetition system. Um, books on history. This is an excellent book, Die Erfindung der Deutschen. I mean, it goes on and on. Uh, and these books are kind of good. Grundwortschatz. Wortschatz Russisch, Grundwortschatz Portugiesisch, where you can learn vocabulary in a new language, relating it back to German, and so you're kind of picking up vocabulary in both. So, I mean, that's just a quick sort of stab at the... I, I wanted to demonstrate that, you know, long before input and compelling input was, was popular, it, had, it, it was always obvious to me that that's how you learn. And that's what I did for Chinese, that's what I did for Japanese, and I could go through all my Chinese books, my Japanese books. Uh, I read and I listened. In fact, behind me here are CDs, audio CDs, and lots for German, for Swedish, for, you know, Italian, Spanish, Russian, Czech, you name it. And I could show you, you know, the books for those, and I may do that if there's interest. The thing is, now the world has changed. And so now you can find content of interest. You can find audio material for download that you don't have to. I used to have to go to Germany and find CDs to listen to. Now you can find the audio material online. Uh, if the material is older, like Goethe, you can import the, uh, the text into Link and listen to the audio and learn, you know, go do the sort of traditional literature that way. If it's modern uh, books, you may have to buy the book. And unfortunately, very often they prevent you from, uh, you know, downloading the text or downloading the audio, even if you've paid for it, which is unfortunate. Uh, but the world has changed. So I, I perhaps should show you what I now do on Link, uh, which is where I now spend my time learning Persian and Arabic, and I've learned other languages there. I haven't really done that much in German, but I have done some. So let me just show you the sort of my level of activity on link for German. So let's have a look here at the um, German page at link. And you can see that there is a lot of different content available to study. Here are some of the things that I have looked at in my sort of study shelf. Nothing very recent, actually. Some of the trending things, what's new, many stories. There's just a tremendous variety of content so I don't have to go looking for it but I haven't done much on link when it comes to um, you know German so if I click on my picture here and I go to my profile then I will see what I've done so last seven days nothing however if I go to all time 
we can get a sense of the level of my activity. So here is the growth of my known words, which on link is 28,000 some. So it's not like I haven't done much on link. I have done, but more in the past. Typically 2009 seemed to be a pretty active period for me. Uh, if I look at, um, you know, uh, links created, again, I was very active for some reason in 2016. Uh, if I look at uh, listening hours, this is not a good indicator because I don't necessarily listen on link. Uh, I might be listening elsewhere as well. Uh, if I go to, um, you know, uh, learn links, these are the words that I have moved to not, not very many. So typically, um, I've been doing a lot of listening and reading, uh, but I don't necessarily move words to known on link. So in terms of my links created, I've got a total of 11,000 words with, that I have looked up, but the known words total is like 28,000. What that means is that there are a lot of words that I simply didn't bother looking up because I knew them. And so a link keeps track of that and tells me that I know 28,000 words. Anyway, that's just very briefly on the subject of what I did on link, but this all comes well after my greatest period act of activity in learning German. I wanted to show you what I have done to improve my German. My German is still not as good as I would like it to be. Uh, I make mistakes and I was probably better before. Uh, I have spoken German here with, with people. I'm a bit sort of shy about my German, but uh, you know, if I have to speak, I speak, I would like to be better as is the case with many of my languages. But on the other hand, I brought my German from a very rudimentary level up to a level where I can understand, I can read, I can read books for pleasure. I can speak to people and with a little bit of effort, I could bring it back to where it was before and improve it beyond that level. And that's kind of the level that I like to get my languages to call it sort of a, a slightly, you know, dormant B2. And once you're there, you don't lose that much, even if you don't use the language or read in the language. And of course, I like to have my languages, you know, parked at that dormant B2 level so that I can learn new languages. And then when the opportunity or the need arises, go back and recover those languages that I have studied before. So I hope that was of interest to you. And I will leave you with a couple of interviews that I've had in German so that you can criticize my German. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.